The first time you start up Poly Dictionary for the iPhone or iPad, you'll see this language selection screen. I've already selected Spanish, so I'll go ahead and press the Done button, which returns me to the main screen of the application. Now I'll search for a word in the dictionary. By tapping on the search bar, the dictionary opens. If I press these two arrows, the application switches between searching in Spanish and searching in English. I'll type the word study in English and click on the first result. You can see that it shows both the verb and the noun to study in Spanish. Each of the words in blue are Spanish words. If I tap on one of these words, a menu opens up which allows me to look at the word in the dictionary or copy the word to the clipboard. I'll go ahead and press the dictionary button which opens up the dictionary entry for that Spanish word. Now we can look at all the possible definitions for estudiar. Of course, different languages have different features. For example, Spanish verbs can be conjugated. So, if I press on the Spanish verb, or if I press the conjugate button in this lower right corner of the screen, the conjugation screen opens up. Or I can flip through the different possible forms of conjugations for the verb estudiar. If estudiar were an irregular verb, the irregular conjugations would be shown in red. I can also quickly and easily add a new flashcard for the verb estudiar by pressing the add flashcard button. Here we can see that all the different fields are automatically filled in. Now, this is probably a bit much. There's a lot of definitions here put in for estudiar. So, I'll go delete most of them. And then press the save flashcard button. The first time I've created a flashcard, the application tells me a little bit about what just happened. Now I'll press the done button at the top of the screen to close the dictionary, which returns me to the main screen once more. I'll now press the flashcards button on the main screen, and here we can see that the study flashcard is already in my flashcard set. Now, if I want to add another flashcard, I can just press the plus button in the upper right. And go ahead and type O test, which in Spanish is prueba. And press save flashcard. And there we are, a new flashcard. If I swipe my finger to the right over the flashcard, I can then delete it. I could use the search bar at the top of the screen to filter the flashcards and view only specific results. You could type in the tags, names, definitions, any information related to the flashcard in that search bar. Now I'll go ahead and press the study flashcards button to start studying flashcards. You can tap on the flashcard or press the flip over button at the bottom of the screen to flip over the flashcard. Once I'm looking at the back of the flashcard, in order to move on, I need to press one of the difficulty buttons at the bottom of the screen. This is because the application uses something called spaced repetition. This is a flashcard selection te technique which ensures that the application chooses flashcards which are appropriately difficult for you. If you have the time, I highly recommend that you look at the Wikipedia article on SRS, or spaced repetition. I'll go ahead and press the hard button, which takes us to the next flashcard. Notice that by default, the application goes in both directions, meaning that it goes both from Spanish to English and English to Spanish as two separate flashcards. I can change these, this by pressing the settings button at the top of the screen. There's lots of settings in here, like if the application goes to or from Spanish, if the pronunciation or part of speech is shown, the number of flash, new flashcards to show per day, and so on. Also, I can directly edit a flashcard by pressing the Edit button. Now I'll close the flashcard screen by pressing the Done button and open up the Interactive Reader. The Interactive Reader 
is a tool that allows us to read text documents in a foreign language. I'm going to open up this text document, which I've copied from my computer, called La Piel del Tambor. It's a book in Spanish. You can see that it resumes right where I left off in the book. I can flip pages by tapping on the left or right side, and I can also make the interface transparent by clicking on the screen once. What's really great, though, is I can double-click on a word and select the dictionary option to immediately look it up in the dictionary. When I'm done. I can press the close button at the top left of the screen to return to the interactive reader, and then the done button to return to the main screen. Now I'll quickly show you some features from the other languages which Polydictionary supports. By pressing on this button at the top, get back to our dictionary selection screen. I'll go ahead and choose Chinese, the simplified dictionary, and press done. Now, when I open up the dictionary, I could type in Chinese characters if I so chose, or I can even search in Pinyin. Of course, Chinese doesn't have conjugations, but it does have Pinyin pronunciation. I can also switch to, for example, Arabic, which also has its own unique set of features, such as right-to-left reading. A final note, settings for flashcards are saved on a per-language basis. So notice that when I'm in Arabic, I don't have any of my Spanish flashcards. This way I don't get confused. However, the interactive reader is incapable of distinguishing between documents in different languages. So be careful. You, you won't want to open up a Spanish document when in Arabic mode, or you won't find the words you're looking for. And there you have it, a basic overview of Poly Dictionary for the iPhone and iPad. If you have any questions, just press on the Help button on the main screen or on the Web button to visit our website. Thanks and enjoy.